G'day folks, Les here from Calandra Marine. We're just um, previewing a new 510 cruise about. People say, okay, we've seen a hundred of them. What's different about this boat? This is the latest model, so it's a 2020 model boat. It's got a few little unique features on it. We will get to them, but we'll just do a quick walk by and I'll just point out some new features in the boat, things we've put on it, then we'll get to the finale, which is what's hanging on the back of it. Yep, so this customer asked, could we have a catch and release fitted on the boat? Normally, as you know, we preview these on the six metre plus boats. There is no minimum size um, that they can't be used on it, providing your trailers arrive on trailer, which this one is. They do save a lot of arguments between yourself and your partner at the boat ramp, so very worthwhile expense. Uh, the other unique feature we see in this boat is the colour. So this is not black, this is a colour called Stealth Grey. Um, our customer didn't want the old squiggly stripes, he just wanted something that was nice and stealth. And when you see this boat with its bow cover and its storm cover and its bit of a yellow open, it's a sight to be seen. So let's move on down and we'll jump inside the boat and talk about a few things in there. As you can see, this boat's been fitted with the NT binnami. So when this boat, this binnami top is folded out, there's plenty of headroom. The rear part of this binnami top is giving some protection over this rear seating area and extending about half a metre into the foredeck as well. So it's a nice boat to walk around and not get sunburnt to the you know what. The other little feature is this boat's equipped with the ski pole with the ski pole, the bait board attachment. So a simple little method, we pull out this pin and we lift off our bait board and we've got a rake ski pole. So ski boat one day, fishing boat the next day. So bearing in mind this is traditionally a pleasure boat that's been turned into a fishing boat. The customer has also asked, could we fit a live bait tank? Fully plumbed live bait tank. Not that dissimilar to what's in a Trident or a Renegade. Again, we've utilised this little space here, which does nothing normally. We've got a transom door, as you probably noticed, we walked in. So we're not jumping over and standing over the top of it. Cruise about, as we all have seen previously. Plenty of underfloor storage. Nice little tank here. And then we've got the big, the big one under here. Which extends forward into the foredeck. Easily get a set of skis in there. Probably another little thingy while we're inside the boat a later, well it's been a production change, is these hatches in both sides of the helm. They used to be inside the bulkhead in here. Now have been moved to the front, which enables being able to have a bigger hatch and a hatch that you can actually fit a life jacket in. Up to the bow area, this boat is equipped with the option of the convertible casting deck. For this video we've taken that centre board out, but these three base cushions are removed and another carpeted deck stands there. So again, fishing boat up the front as well as Mum's Cruiser. Now we're getting into the tricky part. Why we brought this boat to the water is to preview the new G2. This is a 115 horsepower, three cylinder G2 Evernote. It is the latest motor, you may have seen them. They've been released in America, they've just been released in Australia. This is one of the, if not the first, BMT, which stands for boat motor and trailer, that is rolled out of production in Quintrex. 
people are probably when we're filming here going, gee, there's nothing much on the dash. This is the new gauge, which is going to tell us everything from fuel economy to trim position to revs to remaining fuel, um, battery voltage, oil level, all our diagnostics, all in that one gauge. You're not cluttering up the, the dash with a, a full of, I'll call them wank value gauges. Like, who really wants a trim gauge? What do you use it for? Well, you don't need all that. You've got one. Which leads me then to the control box. Looks very similar to the old Heaven Road G1 control box. Yes, it does look similar. Notice the elimination of, we don't have a cold start lever here, which was never a cold start lever on the, on the G1s. A fly-by-wire throttle. So no cables, electronic throttle, because we're running an electronic gearbox. This is the same principle as you've seen on the big G2s that have been out now for nudging six years in the big box. So let's don't talk any more about what's up here. Let's have a look what's on the back. Yeah. So it looks very similar to its big brother. We'll call it the one point the 150 HO, which is the 2.7 litre. This is the 1.865 litre. As I said, three cylinder in line. They have changed the trim system and tilt system and modified the steering system from the original G2 format to make it, I suppose from a technician's point, it's a lot more user friendly from our point. We can get in there and we can get some more things a lot more accessible. It doesn't have that big bulky look that the bigger models do. It has got that setback, which for all you people that want to put a pod on your boat, Maybe you should put a G2 on because it's got its own built-in pot. Still got the trailer, trailable arm. It's a modified version, similar to the G1, nothing like the G2 that we've previewed in the past. But a great unique feature is this has a steering lock pin situated in here. I don't know if we can get a bit of picture there simply removes, as you can see, there is a storage pin place for it. This eliminates what I would call head wobble when you're tearing down the highway or you're going off the beaten track a bit, you're not putting strain on the motor, which is putting strain on the transom of the boat too, so, mate, that's ingenious. I'm, I'm blown away with that. Get down to the bottom side of the motor. Looks very similar to the gearbox. Almost identical. It's an electronic gearbox, so it doesn't run a shift shaft. It works via an actuator, which is situated inside the gearbox, which engages it in and out of gear. Um, in the six years we have been um, selling the G2s, we have never replaced an actuator. People say, oh, electronic, something to go wrong. Well, look at it this way. The old shift shaft, bit of stainless rod, bit of stainless rod. We turn it this way, we turn it that way to adjust. How accurate is that? Electronics, they're taking over the world. It also enables a very smooth shifting. Um, cannot fault the gearbox scenario. Most importantly, this motor's ultra low emissions, which is um, a thing that people can't get their head around, that you can produce a, a two-stroke engine to meet those standards. Well, in some G2 models, they are twice as clean as their four-stroke counterparts. All G2 models will outperform a four-stroke in a The other thing you can notice when we're running it is extremely quiet and very fuel efficient. Now this motor, when we say HO, stands for high output. High output um, enables the manufacturer 
to have a 10% horsepower variance and still claim the horsepower of the motor at a lesser amount. So we're saying 115. If that is 10% greater, we just add it on. 11.5 horsepower on top of that. Now that is permissible under that HO banner. So I'm not going to tell you what the horsepower is because you jump behind one of these and if I put 150 on there, you'd still believe it was 150. So let the buyer determine that for themselves. Basic everything else, straightforward steering, power steering as we've spoken. These are your cables, they run from a hydraulic helm. They run on pressure sensors, which in the old motor, if we ever had to get to these pressure sensors, it was about a three hour job. Look at that, I reckon I could pull that out in 10 minutes after I found the right spanner. Um, very user friendly. No letdowns in this system. Um, working simply on pressure and activating assistance where required. So, it's, when people say power assistance steering, all steering is power assistant, whether it's electronic or it's hydraulic, this is hydraulic. But again, a first to heaven route, which they've now carried down in the smaller engine. Very large engine mounts down here, which eliminate vibration throughout the motor, which then would transfer to the back of the boat in a normal situation. So again, very smooth, very user friendly. One big rigging tube. This is where it all comes into play, that everything is in there. We have got your controls, your battery cable, your fuel lines, everything that's communicating, the gauge, everything that's communicating with this motor is in one housing. No ugly hydraulic helms, no ugly cables, the snake skin everywhere. So, I mean, can't pull any negatives to this new motor. So let's get it out on the water. Let's film it a little bit. It's, as you can probably notice by the trees in the water, it is blowing as per normal. Typical day for Calandra Marine. Everything was looking rosy two hours ago, but we buggerized around and we had to put up with the top. But luckily we got the boat to handle it too. So let's get on the water. Okay, can you hear that running? Probably I got the mic around my neck. Listen to that. I didn't tell you it was a two stroke. It'd be on when we ran a four stroke. So, this gauge we were talking about, obviously it's pretty glary out here because I haven't got the Benemy top up. It's given us everything we want to know. So, we're doing 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of a kilometre an hour. We're ticking along at 490 to 500 RPM. We've got 67% fuel and 29% trim. So, um, as with the big G2s, auto trim, I trim, whatever you want to call it, whatever works for you, this boat's going to trim itself once again. So we're down to no trim and gauged it into gear. Look at this throttle. I'm not... A I'm using one finger either way to show how light it is. Get you, Parry, to focus on the shoreline. Yep. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna open this baby up, and you should be able to see how quick this thing gets moving. So, quick look at the speedo. We're doing just over four kilometres an hour. Hang on, mate. We're doing 58, 59, 60, 66. 
We're doing 70 k's an hour. I don't know if we could measure that, but wouldn't be much over um, 150 metres. You know, if you want to pull two skiers out on single skis in this size boat, you have no option other than to put that motor on the back because there is no other outboard engine manufactured in the world that's going to give you the torque that these motors give you. And you know, we're just cruising along at 60 k's an hour. And I reckon when we turn into the wind, we'll probably even get some more out of this baby. So again, we're going into a corner. We're not touching the trim. We don't need to because the motor knows what we're doing. These, these packages having the power steering, the light throttle, the auto trim are designed that a novice can totally handle this. And you know, it's blowing 25 knots, under four grand, and we're nudging 50 k's an hour. I'm gonna take me hat off. Look at that. and we're nudging 70 k's an hour. I'll get you to watch this trim gauge, Barry, and just watch the numbers and watch the RPM and you'll see what that trim's doing. So what that's effectively doing is moving the motor up and down as we require it for the situation we're in. So we're back doing 30 k's an hour. To get maximum bite out of the prop, we need that motor down. But when we're trimmed out, when we're doing high speed, we don't require that because less of the boat is in the water. So slower speeds, more of the boats in the water, requires more thrust, requires the trim down. The distance between the back of the boat and the front of the motor is, is shorter. As we're going faster, we need to get, we're in less of the boat in the water, pretty well from back, less than midships in the water so the motor's trimming out to gain speed. You still haven't got the same thrust, but if we were to punch it at a halfway situation, that motor's gonna just take over and do what it's required. And that's on this boat. We put that motor on a 530 Frontier or a Freestyler. It's going to do different because it's a different, mo it's a different boat. We put it on your fiberglass Haynes Hunter. Again, it will react to that boat. It's it's not all about the boat, it's about the motor. Quindrex's the blade huller is primarily a very um, fast reacting hull to get up on the plane. And you can get away with a lot less horsepower on a Quindrex than you can on most traditional aluminium hull boats. So um, but then you talk a fiberglass boat, they slip through the water, they're aerodynamically better. So in their situation, the top end speed is a lot higher. So if this, this boat had a fiberglass hull identical to what it's got on as an aluminium boat, instead of doing 70 k's like we were just doing, we possibly would be doing 90 k's an hour. So, And we've got very little spray here, which was really only when I turned it into the chop, but if you look at the front of the windscreen, very dry boat, there's another Quintrex over there, a top ender, 
he's probably thinking, gee, I wish I could um, put one of those new GTs on the back of that and get rid of that yammy, but he'll get there. In actual fact, this throttle is so light, like the G2 throttle is a concealed side mount, it's a different looking throttle. Um, I would hesitate to say that this throttle is more responsive, it's, it's actually lighter. It's probably more, it's got a bit more resistance into gear, but as you can hear, no clunking. Which you do get, and the revs fluctuate, so we're at 480, as soon as we put it into gear, bang, we're up to 640, it knows what's happening. Again, this is the beauty of electronics, don't be scared of them. If, if you're driving a car that's still got a cable accelerator, you know, you had to get out of them every two or three hours because your, your leg went to sleep. You know, now we have cruise control, we've got electronic throttles on cars, and I mean, the next thing I can see happening with one of these, which could be extremely dangerous, how simple would it be to adapt cruise control on this? Because everything's electronic. You know, we're not running extra motors or anything like that, so food for thought. So the people that bought this boat just sold a um, high-powered wake boat and obviously are very concerned about buying a boat with an outboard on the back. Well, they're not going to be one bit concerned when they jump in this thing and take off. We're lucky that um, Waza hasn't got much air because he'd lose it in this. Bloody hell. What do you get to say about that, mate? It's pretty good. Pretty good. So, here you go. Here's my honest to God opinion. And you know I'm a lover of GT, so there's no one that loves them more than me. This thing here has more mid range pickup than a 150 HO has on a 6 metre boat. So do your numbers, 115, 5.1, we'll call it 5.1, we'll just use the Quindrex numbers, 51, 115, 65, 150, this thing has got that, I don't know, just something in the middle and three cylinders. Other thing, 186 kilos, okay, yeah, oh, you can probably buy a four stroke and it's uh, 100 and 81 kilos, but then you've got to add all your oil into your motor, then you're adding your oil into your gearbox, then you're adding your hydraulic steering ramp. So, finish to finish, this is got doing the numbers, it's doing the job. And you know, the boys that are out there racing boats, they're looking to trim every little bit of weight, mate. They'll take a plastic cover off of something under a motor to save 50 grams. Well, they're not going to want to strip anything off of these if they want to do some serious racing. So, anyway, I think it's time to get back to the, the shop, give it a bath, get it ready to hand over to its new owners. Um, but that's our preliminary test drive that we take our boats on to make sure they're adequate and meet the needs of the customer. And I think this one definitely ticks the boxes and exceeds. So, till next time, catch us later.